Hello, yes. Today I thought I'd review Dead Sea, a sort of horror thriller I saw that came out this year. Strap in and crack open a bottle of rum and here we go. We get some swimming trophies in the opening shots. I'm sure this is that foreshadowing thing I heard about. An actress who looks enough like Sydney Sweeney but at a fraction of the fee is cooking eggs. It appears to be a new concept to her. A kid, presumably her brother, is playing with a disgusting toy that looks like it's been stored up an arse for a decade. Kaya, or something equally stupid sounding, lives with her dad and her little brother. Her mum has presumably passed on judging by the serious grief acting her dad is trying to convey and the cheeky beer he's hiding. Kayak drives off to a boat. On the way she sees a CGI seagull bobbing through the air. She meets her friend Tessa, who is worried her dad will be mad her way out there, even though both women are clearly the wrong side of 20. They meet Tessa's boyfriend Julian, a surfer dude type with annoyingly dyed hair, who is kind to children. And also his friend Xander. Kylie facetimes her little brother, then comments to Tessa that her dad is probably halfway through his first six pack. In America, their cans of beer are the same size as a Coke. I know, it's funny, isn't it? Tessa then gives her a friendship bracelet that Kaya has to pretend she doesn't want to rip off her arm before it gives her a rash. Xander entices Kaya to the islands they're heading to with promises of wild pigs you can swim with. Sounds horrific to me. They then jet ski for ages while a curiously low energy song plays. Once at the island, the two couples have some sappy chat time intercut with stock footage of animals. Then we get the swimming pig. Cute. The four teenagers, I guess they're supposed to be, frolic in the ocean while the same crap song from earlier plays. On the way back, disaster strikes. Blonde bloke crashes into nothing and he and Tessa get ejected from their jet ski. He thinks it's hilarious as they splash around until Mr. Magoo Zander drives right into his head and then the other jet ski. And now they're all in the drink. The girls find Zander barely alive but no sign of Julian. Then the jet skis sink. There's a shot of the sun beginning to set, but when we cut back to them, they're still in the same daylight they were in the previous scene. Oh, now the smallest shark in the world is approaching. Ah, fishing boat, they're saved. But oh dear, the captain is smoking. Sure sign of a villain. Good guys vape. They clamber aboard and ask the captain to call for help. He doesn't though. Shocker, I know. Tessa goes to find water, the drinkable kind, and doesn't come back. When Kylo goes to look for her, the captain tells her that Tessa is using the toilet. Well, she was complaining that her stomach hurt. He then says some sinister things before he fucking chloroforms her out of nowhere. Then he opens a hatch on the boat and starts the engine. The girls wake up in a filthy below deck area. We then get a lingering arse shot as this film isn't being sold on its scary factor. And they find the word help scratched on a post, presumably by the marketing department. Then Captain Nasty opens the hatch to lower some food down, but Kaya annoys him, so he takes it back. Captain Ray, we find out his name is, is doing some fishing while Xander lies dying on the deck. Not a bad paycheck as acting goes. Then another boat turns up, giving the girls some hope. A bald, bearded man climbs aboard and tends to Xander. He then descends to the girls' prison area. He checks Tessa for injuries, then starts quoting Shakespeare. Though she be but little, she is fierce. Shakespeare. Yeah. He kind of reminds me of that annoying card dealer, Sunshine, from The Sopranos, who wouldn't shut the hell up and then got shot for it. The Doctor and Ray have a conversation, and then we learn that they have a sort of organ harvesting deal going on. Now, I'm no sailing expert, and only a hobbyist organ harvester, but surely there can't be much trade in picking up stranded teenagers in the middle of the sea. Now it looks like poor old Xander's number might be up. We see Dr. Baldy begin to prep for surgery of some kind, and then it sort of cops out and we see Xander wrapped up like a shark's birthday present being chucked into the sea. Don't worry though, wood tends to float. The doctor then smokes a ciggy with the bloody glove he's just been excavating Xander with. Ugh, oh, he'll get it all in his beard. The sun begins to set again. The dastardly organ stealers take Tessa above deck and start doing tests on her. Meanwhile, not Sydney Sweeney begins her escape attempt. Some hours later, she's finally got the rusty cover thing to budge, and she's free. Baldy and Moody are strapping down Tessa in order to steal her liver. Hmm, she seems like a party girl. I'm not sure it'll be in great condition, but beggars can't be choosers, I suppose. Kaya makes it to the radio and tries to call for help, but to no avail. 
while the Doctor puts on a royalty-free version of House of the Rising Sun while he gets to work. Kaya finds a selection of handy weapons to choose from in the pre-boss fight room she finds herself in. Now, I'll give the film some credit here. They could have had a kick open the door and say something like, get pooned. But the film takes the time to show how a young girl might actually behave in this situation. She's scared and nervous, she doesn't really want to kill anyone, but she's got no choice. She shoots Doctor Annoying and he makes some hilarious noises. While Kaya is untying Tessa, the Doc grabs her, seemingly shrugging off a harpoon to the heart. Tessa, however, grabs a scalpel and finishes him off. Well, sort of. Still going, this asshole! He takes a hell of a long time to die. Captain Ray returns and sees the dead Doc. He sort of looks around a bit in vague bemusement, like a man on his first day working at a zoo, before deflating the dinghy so the girls can't escape. Now begins a deadly game of cat and mouse. Oh, f***ing hell, there's still half an hour to go. Kaya and Tessa are swimming for the Doc's yacht, which is handily all lit up in red. Captain Ray discovers that Kaya has cut the power to the boat, and he's just deflated his only escape dinghy. Tessa is dragging Kaya down, so she makes the noble decision to stay behind and let her best friend live, which Kaya is pretty quick to take her up on. Kaya eventually reaches the yacht in a sequence that goes on far too long, before calling for help on the radio. She reaches the Coast Guard and tells them about her situation. While the Coast Guard's telling her to look for a beacon, she finds a laptop with a sort of human trafficking eBay on it. The Coast Guard is nagging her to find the beacon so they can get to her, and she finally gets her hands on it. She goes to throw it in the sea to activate it, but then she gets spooked by Captain Naughty, who has swum over from his boat. Kaya hides while Captain Ray looks for her. He then ambushes her and stabs her in the stomach, but then in a hilarious callback to the film Dead Calm, she shoots him in the mouth with the flare gun she picked up earlier. She's pretty badly wounded though, and she passes out before recovering just enough to grab the beacon and hurl it towards the sea. But it lands just short. Is this girl ever going to get a break? She just wanted to swim with some pigs and possibly sleep with a boring man. Luckily the motion of the ocean tips the beacon into the sea and it starts sending out the location. Now it's morning and we get the CGI seagull from earlier again. Kaya looks pretty dead but the Coast Guard are closing in. They board the ship in full body armour with rifles drawn. I think our Coast Guard mostly just carry fishermen's friends. Kaya has a pulse luckily but there's no sign of Tessa. She's helicoptered away and then we see Tessa still in the life ring. The Coast Guard pull her onto the boat, and she's still alive somehow. It looks like Kaya is done for, but she rallies round. Her dad shows up in the rustiest Jeep ever seen on film, and wearing a t-shirt that reminded me of that He-Man ripoff from the 80s, Visionaries. He strokes her hair, and presumably his beer breath wakes her up. None of Tessa's family show up. I guess they hit their actor budget by this point, what with the billions of emergency workers. But we do get a rather sweet moment where the two girls make eye contact. Then the film ends. Now I wasn't too impressed with the first half, but the second just about made up for it. So maybe give it a watch if you're with some friends and just want something you can take the piss out of while you get drunk and order pizza. Bye then.